Hello and welcome to another episode of Bevy Basics. In this episode, I'm going to be covering control flow over systems in Bevy and how you can use this knowledge to cut down on unnecessary checks at the beginning of systems in order to speed up large and complicated games. So hopefully by the time you're watching this video, you are fairly comfortable with the Bevy ECS and understand what a system is and why you might need some conditions about when you want them to run. If not, I have a video detailing the ECS architecture and how it relates to Bevy. If you want to go watch that first, please do so. But if you're up to speed and want to know how to apply conditions to your systems, you've come to the right place. Let's jump right into it. So what exactly do I mean when I say control flow? Since my definition for this video is quite broad in scope, I find it necessary to define it here. For this video, I'll be considering anything that Bevy gives you as an option to control when a system may execute to be part of the system control flow. This includes things such as the scheduler sets as well as run conditions and ordering of systems. The point in the video that each topic will be covered is roughly judged based on how wide the effect can be felt of the system. For example, consider applying a condition to a scheduler. This would affect not only the scheduler, but all the sets inside the scheduler and all the systems inside of those sets. So at least on the higher levels, a nice hierarchy can be formed, indicating the direction and flow of control over your systems. Let's start right at the top. First, you have the application itself, which then contains all of the subsequent control logic. But not only do you insert the system's sets and schedules into the application, it is in charge of what is called the runner. This is the function that is called first when you start up your application. It is in charge of setting up your control loop and executing your schedulers at the correct order and time. Most of the time, you don't need to mess with the runner since both Bevy's default and minimal plugin bundles contain their own runner that is pre-built in. Bevy's default plugins has a game loop that will run 60 times a second, while the minimal loop will run as fast as possible unless you specify a minimum length of time. The next level down from the application is the schedulers themselves. So what is a schedule? Well, to be overly simplistic, it's a collection of systems that have interconnected control logic. Systems can only be ordered and grouped within their own schedule. So if you split systems out into individual schedules, they can no longer be placed before or after other systems that do not reside within the same scheduler. Schedulers are the largest group that a system can be in outside of actually being included in the application itself. The primary reason I consider schedulers to be so powerful is that they can control a large number of systems with minimal overhead, since they can share a bunch of conditions and make a large amount of assumptions about all the systems contained within themselves. The most obvious of these is the on startup schedule, which can be shorthand accessed by using on startup when adding a system or by using the add on startup system method on the application struct. This scheduler is run once and exactly once, once the application has finished initializing itself, all resources and plugins. Because all the startup systems are grouped together into the same scheduler without independent run conditions, it is not necessary to have any runtime checks to make sure that the system should run. It also means that once we have run the on startup scheduler once, we can discard it since we know that none of these systems will be run again. This eliminates the need to check systems to see if they are a startup system and therefore need to be skipped. Currently, Bevy has four schedulers that are added by the default plugin bundle. These are the outer scheduler, which operates the core application loop, startup, which is executed the first time the outer scheduler is run, main, which is executed every time the outer scheduler is run, and finally, fixed update, which will execute at a fixed time step that can be configured using the fixed time resource. It is also possible to make custom schedules with their own complex execution behavior. The most powerful way of doing this is to add a system to the outermost scheduler that determines whether your custom scheduler should be run or not. This gives you the greatest control over the timing and execution of your scheduler, though it is possible to run your scheduler from inside the main loop. This is actually how Bevy takes care of its on entry and on exit state transitions, but you give up some control by allowing the main scheduler to determine when your system runs, and therefore you may not be able to execute in as fine a control as you would otherwise. To add a system to any other schedule but the default schedule, you need to use the inside schedule method. The next level down from schedules in your control flow tool set is the system set and base set. They work more or less the same as the scheduler, but on a smaller scope. Like the scheduler, they are a collection of systems and other sets. The main difference being that they can have conditions applied directly to them that is then run and maintained by the scheduler that they are in. These conditions will be covered later, but a good reason to use sets over schedulers is that they can have interconnection between and across sets. 
and other systems. So it is possible to have a set change where it is positioned based on the other systems that it contains or are contained within the scheduler. This is not possible with a scheduler itself. Just to get out of the way and not repeat myself over and over, I'm going to specify some differences between the system set and the base set since outside of these two points, they are more or less identical. So let's start with the obvious. System sets are combinable, whereas base sets are not. Every system set must belong to at most one base set, though they can be combined into any number of sets. For those that remember Bevy pre 0.10, it had stages and base sets are what Bevy 0.10 replaced stages with. The base sets that Bevy provides by default have specific orders that they execute in with optional command flushes between each execution. The order of Bevy's core base set is first, pre-update, update, update post-update and last. Bevy does have other base sets, such as the setup and the rendering base sets. You can also even make your own custom base sets, but I will not be covering these in this video. As I mentioned, Bevy has command flushes between each of these sets, allowing for changes to the world to be locked in between the execution of any two sets, as well as a fixed update that is run on a fixed time just before the update. It, however, does not have a command flush run between it and the update. So it can be viewed more as an extension on the update set for the ordering of your systems, since without a command flush, the two may as well be indistinguishable. The other key difference between base sets and system sets is in the name. Base sets can only be on the base of your schedule. You cannot nest base sets. Unlike system sets, they can be nested in any order so, for example, if you wanted logic that only executed while the player is alive, you could make a set called is alive. I don't know, it's really hard to come up with concrete examples. It is most common you will just be using these groups inside the base sets. For example, inside the update base set, you would then run the is alive set. It's just important to remember that you can nest sets inside sets in order to create more complicated logic. Sets work in an AND style of logic. This is intuitive when the sets are nested inside each other, since the inner set will only run if the outer set is also running. This still follows true when a system is placed inside two separate sets. So if a system is in set A, it will run if set A runs. If, a set, if it is in set B, it will run if set B runs. If it is in both A and B, it'll only run if set A and B are running. I'm not sure if there's a way to achieve an OR state for these multiple set behaviors. This feels like it could be useful to run some sort of logic like in space or underwater, but since systems are only in a set or not, I don't believe there would be any way to achieve this. Currently, I believe if you want to achieve this kind of logic, you would need to break it down into a more mechanic-centric approach, such as with gravity or holding breath. If you know of a better way of doing this, please do feel free to leave them in the comments. The third level of control flow is when you finally start applying things to systems, though they can also be applied to sets. So I'm gonna quickly describe systems and then show you where in the creation of systems run conditions come in and why Bevy has decided to implement its own functionality for these. Systems are the Rust functions that you actually add to your application. Part of the design process of making systems is picking the system parameters. And this becomes important to control flow when you start adding system parameters, specifically to check to see if a system should run. These are things like adding optional resources and returning early if it's none, or checking to see if a resource has changed before running the bulk of your system's code. This is all fine and well for a few systems, but can become a bit of a bottleneck when hundreds of systems need tasks to be created just for them to quickly check a few if statements to decide that they don't need to run anyway. This is where run conditions come in. I mentioned earlier that systems can be grouped together into sets, and these then can have conditions applied to them that control when they run or not. These are what I refer to when I say run conditions. These run conditions can come in many forms. The basic form of a run condition is run if method that can be applied to any system or set when adding it to your application. The run in method is basically a cut down version of a system and returns a boolean indicating whether the system that it is attached to should run. This can be any function or closure that takes in read only system parameters. These systems are run on the main thread, so cut down on the overhead of having to spin up tasks to check very simple logic. Conditions can be chained together in both a short circuiting and and or capacity using the and then or the or else method respectively. Since run conditions can be applied to sets, it is possible to save large quantities of computation by applying run conditions to sets that have large amounts of shared logic, or when the run condition is particularly expensive on these particular systems. 
The fact that you don't need to check the condition for each individual system and instead only check it on its parent set. This is very similar to earlier when I was talking about the on startup scheduler, since it is a similar idea, but on a smaller scale. Bevy has a small collection of these functions pre-built that take in generics so that they can be customized to your use. This is done to make it easier to get access to some very common conditions in very quick and efficient ways. Bevy has things such as checking if a state has changed, if a resource has changed, or if the resource even exists in the first place. There is even one to see if any entities with a specific component exist before running any of your systems that may rely on the entities with that component. There's quite a few of these pre-built functions and I don't know of any way that collects them into a single place. So you may have to do some digging to find the one you need. Or it is quite simple just to make your own. I have personally made one that checks to see if a specific key is pressed before executing code like if a player should jump. Another subset of run conditions that is more restrictive than run if are the ordering methods. They allow you to specify the order in which systems and sets can be executed inside a single schedule. The two ordering methods that I am aware of are before and after. They allow you to specify if a system or set must run before or after a different system or set. This allows you to make sure that certain things like user input is collected before the player is moved. Ordering is how Bevy specifies that the base sets happen in the correct order, rather than having them happen arbitrarily, which is what will happen if no order is specified. The final piece of control flow I'd like to cover for this video is the pipe method. This allows you to break larger systems into pieces so that some code can be reused. Pipe systems are treated as one larger system and will run consecutively passing data from one to another. This does however block all systems that conflict with any part of the chain of systems from running in parallel with any part of the system. So it is best to keep your pipe components non-conflicting. At the moment, the best use for pipe functions that I know of is for logging and reporting errors in a consistent way. Having any system that can fail pipe into a standardized error reporting system, allowing for you to maintain and manage your error handling more reliably. One day in the future, hopefully Bevy will implement functionality for piping systems to indicate a breakpoint and allow for more parallelization by allowing for mutable access to be given up part way through a system or acquired at the end or partway through a system, similar to how ad hoc commands can be used to do one way writes at the end of a system, but in a way that does not require complete world access to be acquired at the end for the command to then be executed. This video has been quite long and was intended more as an outline of different ways you can use and create control flow in Bevy. In the future, I intend to do dedicated videos on each of these segments, but at the moment, I know there are at least a few good videos out there on run conditions. If you found this video helpful or don't want to miss out on the future videos, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on the video. I'd also like to shout out to all my Patreons. If you'd like to support the channel, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description. And as always, all my sneaky beaky Patreons will be hidden somewhere in this video, so have fun trying to find them. Thank you for watching and happy coding.